Okay. Uh, I am Cecile from Norway, I uh, I want to ask you, do you think that there will soon be a ground operation in Gaza and do you support that? I won't get into operational details, it's for the government to decide, but I think the people of Israel are united. There is no opposition and coalition here. We're united uh, in supporting the effort to roll back this tide of terror. I was just in a, in a shelter uh, with uh, children. The children, one little girl, I think she was about three years old, she was, uh, she, she was holding on to her mother, but she said to me, when will this stop? When will the rocket stop? And another 10-year-old uh, told me how, uh, what the drill was, what he was supposed to do when the, uh, when the missiles uh, start coming in. And I don't think children should be put in that place. And I think it's our responsibility to make sure that they can live a normal life. Right now, as we speak, 851,000 Israelis are under rocket attack. They're being terrorized. These rockets kill people. We visited the house of a, of a mother of four who was cut down by rockets on a bus stop. Um, they maim people and they terrorize people. They terrorize close to a million Israelis and hundreds of thousands of children who cannot go to school. No country would tolerate that. No people would accept it. We don't and we'll support the effort to stop this uh, attack, this terrorist attack on our on our cities, on our people, on our children. Yes, please. Aaron Heller from the Associated Press. Yeah. A question for both you and the mayor. Um, the mayor just said a minute ago that it's impossible to live under the situation, and yet all these things are happening, the schools, long distance, so the shelters. What are you doing to try and keep some kind of normalcy in, 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 the, in the face of all of this? Uh, of, what? of course, uh, we try. It's not uh, easy. Uh, all the time we, we appeal, uh, uh, we speak to the people, you know, the most of the people now they don't do shopping, all the, all the shopping centers uh, are closed, and you know, all, uh, and also all the ceremonies like uh, wedding and uh, bar mitzvahs, all uh, delayed, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we try that uh, to run the city and uh, to keep it, uh, by meeting uh, the population, as I told you, in the children, with the children, uh, by by doing activities for the children, and uh, the workers, some of the workers they don't go to to their uh, uh, to their uh, to their work. Uh, I think maybe 20 20 percent uh, of the of the employment. People the employees, say huh? 20% yeah, of the workforce. I think, yes. This is what, uh, what uh, so I think. 20% are at home? Huh? 20% are at home? Yes, at home. Uh, this, uh, my fault, I think. Uh, because, they, you know, that the most of the plant, the most of the factories, they are not, uh, they are not uh, safe. And, uh, uh, of course, it's very, very difficult to continue in the, in the, norm, in the normal life <laughs> when every day uh, rockets on our city. And what do you think, Mr. Daniel, about the coping mechanism? I mean, can they continue to go on, or, or, or is it? Do you believe that they should shut down, or are they doing the about right the thing what? by continuing to try and live a normal life even under these situations? No, you try to live under uh, under these conditions, but we have to put a stop to these conditions. The most important thing is that we we can't accept that our population will be under uh, permanent rocket attack uh, or the threat of permanent uh, rocket attack. Uh, and that, that has to stop. And so we not only have to stop the, the rocketing of our cities, but we have to uh, remove the threat. And that means that you don't just want to cease fire, you want to make sure that they can't rearm and smuggle in the weapons uh, so that the next round in a few months will uh, encompass even more cities, including Tel Aviv. Because if we don't stop it, that's what will happen. Netanyahu, yeah. Orange yeah. uh, what specifically is the end game? Obviously, what's happening now. And secondly, uh, what would you do, or what do you intend to do, if another Israeli soldier is kidnapped? This isn't a game. We have to put an end to this terror. That's the goal. If you will. That's the end game. To put an end to this terror. It's got to stop. Uh, I don't want to talk about tactical and operational details. Uh, I'm not in the government. I'm in the opposition right now, and my role is to say that there isn't, in fact. 
uh, any difference uh, between opposition and coalition, we're united. The people of Israel truly unite under these uh, conditions. Uh, and and we, we will do everything that we can to support <clears throat> the national effort to roll back the tide of terror. Roll it back twice. Once in the field, uh, giving support to our soldiers and to our uh, citizens in the rear, and our mayors and our police force and, uh, and uh, uh, all the uh, firemen and other people who are trying to give uh, assistance to a terrorized population. And the second thing is to give help in fighting the slanders that are leveled against Israel by these double war criminals who accuse us of crimes. I mean, we're fighting the most moral war, the just, a just war of self-defense, trying to target the terrorists. The terrorists fire on civilians, they celebrate civilian casualties, and they hide behind civilians, using them as a human shield. To fire on civilians is a war crime. To uh, hide behind civilians is a war crime too. So we uh, we cannot let these people get away with it, and we shouldn't let the international community be duped by the argument of sympathy or symmetry, a false moral symmetry that the terrorists are trying to impose on the world. Because if the democracies, if the civilized nations accept this false symmetry, what will happen is that the terror will grow. It will grow using this tactic. It will be used against us in the future, but as I say to all the civilized countries, it will be used against you. If you want to stop terror now, side with Israel. That's being on the side of justice, on the side of morality, on the side of civilization, against barbarism. Last question, please, in English. It is Hassan Al-Dali from Hungarian television. And yeah. uh, as, as much as I understood, you're saying that the uh, Israeli army is targeting the enemies Hamas, but yeah. uh, over 100, uh, civilian, a thousand uh, civilian casualties are in the Gaza Strip, and if I understand it, the hospitals there just don't have the capacity to handle them. So is the government considering opening the borders to let the casualties, the civilian casualties out? Well, two comments. First, we regret all <laughs> civilian casualties, but uh, they should be laid uh, flatly, uh, the responsibility of Hamas, because Hamas is uh, embedding its rocket launchers in homes, in schools, uh, in populated, densely populated areas deliberately because they don't really care about human life. Not only the innocent civilians they kill and maim on our side, but they don't care about their own civilians. In fact, I think they're happy when their own civilians are hurt because it creates that false symmetry between the attacker and the attack. Uh, and second, uh, I'm sure that the Israeli <laughs> government has, uh, has demonstrated that it cares about the humanitarian concerns. Uh, it's allowed hundreds of trucks to come in. And if we wanted to really uh, use our power, uh, then we would do other things, because we've not used a fraction of a fraction of our immense power, because we're not using it against the population. We're trying to surgically target the terrorists themselves. This is the entire difference between legitimate warfare and criminal uh, and, and war crimes. The difference is that you do not target civilians directly. The Hamas is targeting civilians directly, deliberately, wantonly, and whereas we're sorry for every civilian casualty, they're happy and they celebrate it when they hit schools, when they hit our children, when they, uh, they murder civilians. We shouldn't lose sight of this distinction. It's the distinction between civilization and barbarism. But does that mean that you won't open the borders of the casualties? I, I don't speak for the Israeli government on this. You can ask them directly. But I'm sure they have humanitarian considerations up front. Shall I have a 